mean they I mean know that motherhood is a responsibility. Watch this. Responsibility. Respond with your ability. It's more than words. See, we got all these titles around here. But are you living up to the title? A real mother ain't finna turn their back on their children. Oh, God. A real mother's not going to flush their child down the toilet. Oh, God. A real mother's not finna put their boyfriend before their children. I said your boyfriend. Oh, oh God. Help us, Holy Ghost. I'm talking about a real mother. We protect their children. A real mother ain't finna give their child to some man, some grown man. Oh, God. I, you, you don't just let your child go over somebody somebody's house. Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Read. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. This is Paul writing to the young pastor Timothy. He said, when I call to what? Remembrance. The unfeigned faith that was in thee. Now, this word unfeigned means sincere faith. So Timothy, watch this, had a no play acting faith. His faith in God was real. It was genuine. And we're going to find out where did Timothy get this genuine or real faith from. Read. Which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois. It was first in his grandmother's Lois. And thy mother Eunice. And the mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that it's in thee also. First point, mothers, what are you passing down to your children? Watch this. You cannot give your children something that you don't have. So if you have a play-acting faith, you know what you're going to give your children? A play-acting faith. If your faith in God is not real or genuine, then how can you give it to your children? You can't. Y'all quiet. I know why you're quiet. The Bible says that this faith that Timothy has was first in his grandmother and in his mother. The Bible don't even mention the fathers. I wonder why. Y'all quiet. Because this is a fatherless generation. Where all the men at? They're either gay Locked up, a bum, y'all talk back to me, a deadbeat. Now, that ain't all men, because we do have some good men, but it's few and far between. And one of the reasons why children are so messed up, so wounded, so scarred, so angry, is because they have not had a father figure in their lives. So we have to commend mothers on today because you all have done a great job thus far. I'm serious. This is a fatherless generation. And, it, and our children have been affected by the fact that they have not had a man figure or a male figure in their lives. So we have to commend the mothers. For holding it down. Come on, let's give our mothers another round of applause. I'm sorry. So the faith that was in Timothy, Timothy was passed down from his grandmother and his mother unto him. So that's the first point, mothers. What are you passing down to your children? Do they see a hypocrite? They see you saying one thing, but doing something different. Speaking in tongue one minute and cursing the other. Do they see a real, genuine faith in the things that pertain to God? Ask yourself that. What am I modeling before my children? Y'all talk back to me. Do they hear me on the phone gossiping? Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Watch this. A mother that fears the Lord will have a major impact 
on the lives of their children. When your children see that you have a reverential fear of God, they see you respect God, they see you respect the things of God, then this goes right into their lives. You pass this down to them. My God. As a mother, you set the course for your children's life. Let me say it again. As a mother, you set the course for your children's life. Watch this. Children do what they see. I'm telling you, children do what they, are you clubbing? Do you have men running in and out? Oh, God, y'all ain't going to like me today. Because the truth will set us free. What are you modeling, mothers, before your children? What do they see? Because children do what they what? See. Watch this. Timothy went on and became a man of God because of, his, because of his grandmother and his mother Eunice influence. They influenced him. They impact his life. What is influence? The ability to persuade somebody about something. I can honestly say this. My mother persuaded me to become a Christian. I'm telling you. I, now I, she may have cussed. I ain't never heard of cuss. I ain't never heard my mother cuss. I've never heard see my mother in the club. That's me. I, I've never seen that. All the stuff I'm seeing today, I've never seen that with my mother. Now she may have did it. She ain't doing it in front of me. As far as I, the thing that I know about my mom is she been saved all her life. I, I even remember growing up when my mother was sick. My mother was sick, bedridden, but she still got up and cooked. She still got us ready for school. I'm telling you, that's all I seen. She kept us clean from head to toe. She kept us groomed. That, that's, what my, that's what I saw. A am I right? That's all I, that's all I saw. All the all stuff I see now, I ain't never seen my mother doing a lot of stuff that I see these women doing today. I've never seen that. I've never had a hoochie mama. I'm going to preach this thing this morning. The reason why you see me my brother and my sister in church, it's because of my mother's life before God. And she wasn't religious. Every time she see me, she quoted scriptures. Nah, my mother wasn't like, she loved us. And you know what she did? She brought us up in church. So when I got saved, watch this, didn't nobody tell me to fast. When I got saved, nobody had to tell me to tie. I, already, I, was, I was taught that as a child. We don't, I'm, telling, I'm talking about being an example. I'm talking about being a model before your children. Not always quoting scripture and condemning them and telling them what they're doing wrong. And you shouldn't be doing this. Pray. Stand in the gap for them. Quoting all them scripture. That's why they don't want to be around you. Because you, you really can't love them. You quoting all these. Now, live the scripture. The Bible says we are living epistles read of men. What good is it, it that you're talking and you're not living it? Why don't you live it and stop talking it? Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. The power, the influence, and that's what influence means, power, of a God-fearing mother. Come on, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses uh, 14 through 15. Read. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. This is Paul writing to the young pastor Timothy again. He said, continue thou or be faithful in the things which thou hast learned. So it, it, that means if Timothy learned something, somebody had to teach him. What are you teaching your children? Wow. How your children, how is your child, children or child in your house and ain't doing nothing? Playing video games. Room a mess. Ain't doing it, failing in school. Oh, uh, y'all talk back to me. Got, got some boy or girl in their bedroom. Hang around with gay folk. I'm talking about you, look kids. 
So, so Timothy's mother and grandmother taught him something. He, look what Paul said. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Your, te- your children should be learning something while they're at home. What should your children be learning? How to get out on their own. How do your children don't know how to wash no dishes, don't know how to vacuum, can't cut no grass. Y'all talk back to me. Can't cook, can't sew, but they know I do play video games all day, shooting too, all day. Y'all are quiet. Failing in school, they got some Jordans on. Don't do nothing you say and clean from head to toe. Belly full. Y'all talk back to me. And they eat, they don't eat what you put before them. They they eat what you what they tell you they want. Who who's the mother? Y'all talk back to me. Who's the parent? Have some three year old child to run in your house. Oh God. Then you you big baller here when you come here. Sit down. We don't want her nothing you got to say. Shut up. You try to tell grown folks something, and you can't d- discipline these kids at home. Oh, God, y'all ain't going to like me today. Read. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Verse 15. And that from a child. Watch this. From a child. Thou hast known the Holy Spirit. My God. Young Timothy was taught the scriptures of the Bible as a child. Listen, from the age of zero to five is when your children are shaped. And you should be pouring into their life at their age. You take them to soccer, football, cheerleader, dance, dance, but you don't bring them to church. I remember going to church as a child, sitting in Sunday school, Learn about Christ. Learn about prayer. Learn about, I'm talking about as a child. So when I got saved, as soon as I got born again, the, the, when the new spirit came in, the word came alive. It was already there. How you grown and don't know nothing? Y'all talk, don't know nothing about God. Don't know nothing about tithing. Don't know nothing about coming to church. Don't know nothing about prayer because your parents failed. I'm telling you, as soon as I got saved, I started fasting. Where did I get that from? I was taught. I had a child. As soon as I got saved, I started tithing. You got grown folks to me. I don't know we're supposed to tithe. Let me slap you inside your head. I don't know nothing about no prayer. We ain't got to come to church. Read. The scriptures that thou art able to make thee wise unto salvation. The scripture gives you insight when it pertains to salvation. See, so Timothy knew and had an understanding of what salvation was because he was taught it as a child. child. Why is it so hard to teach grown folk? Because they said in their ways. Some, some of us refuse to change. We do. We ain't changing. I know we look saved and all that. We talk saved, but we rebellious. You know why you rebellious? Because you had your way your whole entire childhood. That's the problem with some of us. It's like it's hard to get you to bend. Hard if you, you won't apologize. All that stuff comes from being raised in a house where you ran it. You can't be giving your child his way. Y'all talk back to me. You're running your husband, but you can't run your child. Oh, y'all ain't like, ah, oh, y'all ain't gonna like me. You treat your husband, you treat your husband like he's your son, but you treat your son like he's your husband. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like me today. You disrespect your husband, but you respect your son. Ah, right, see y'all. See, that's why people have a problem coming here. How you respect your son, but you don't respect your husband? That's not a good example before your children. You disrespect your husband, but you respect your son. Oh, God. <laughs> Read. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Through faith, which is in who? Verse 16. 
All scriptures is given by what? Inspiration of God and is profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, correction, for instructions in the righteousness. This, the, the Bible says that the scriptures are God inspired. That means God breathed on his word. God caused his word to come alive in your life. But you got to plant it in your children. How do you plan in your children? Of course, at home, you, you read the Bible, study with them, but more so, you bring them to church. You bring them to church. How, I, I, how many kids at home they don't have to come to church? You leave it out the house, but they at home in the bed, in your bed, with some boy. <laughs> it was no option in my mama's house. No, every, when, when we, listen, I'm going to church. Pull me by my ear. I'm going to church. It wasn't, I, 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 had, I had a choice whether or not I'm coming to church or not, huh? Who does that? All right, let's go to the next scripture. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. This morning we're talking from the subject, the influence of a God-fearing mother, a mother that reverence and respects God, a mother that has a fear of God, reverential fear of God. Read. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to a wife a daughter of Levi. Uh-huh. And the woman conceived. The woman got pregnant. Now notice he got his wife pregnant, not his girlfriend. Reason why we have all these issues with this generation is because a lot of these children were born out of wedlock. And you don't have to say nothing. Most of these kids don't have their fathers in their lives. And most of the mothers that they, they, they had babies by the, these men, they didn't marry them. I did the same thing. That, infect, that affects a child. Y'all talk back to me. Because whatever's in you, when you can see that child, it gets in the child. So if you got this child through fornication, then that fornication spirit is going to be in your child. Y'all talk back to me. We don't understand the danger of having sex before marriage. It messes folks up because you pass down spirits. So if you've been with seven other men before you got with the man you with now, all them seven men going to be in your spirit. Oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. No wonder folk nuts. Multiple spirits, multiple personalities, mental issues, because you got seven different people in you. Y'all, y'all don't understand that. When you have sex with somebody, whatever's in that person's bloodline gets in your bloodline, and you pass it to your children. And all of us got some spirits in our bloodline. Alcoholic spirits, lazy spirits, holy spirits. Y'all talk back to me. Alcoholic spirits, dope spirits. That stuff is in us. It's called generational curses. So you have to understand when you lay down with somebody, it's more to it than that. It's more than a feeling. Whew. Read. And bear a son. And she bear a son. And when she saw him... That he was a goodly child. Watch this. He was a goodly or godly child because he had godly parents. My God, he had godly parents. Read. She hid him for three months. She hid him for three months because a hit was out on his life. Pharaoh had commanded that every firstborn child be killed. Firstborn. And most of the young men that have been killed have been firstborn. If you track it back, you talk to mothers that have lost their son, they've been firstborn. And the devil still trying to kill our firstborn. And I've never seen so many folk getting killed in my whole entire life. You know why you need to be a God-fearing mother? Because the devil trying to kill your children. Read. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. And she daubed it with slime and with pitch. You know what she's doing? She putting her faith to action. See, see, this is what you have to do. When you can, when, when it, it will come a time when you have to let go of your child. And if you don't have faith in God, you're going to be tormented when you let him go. As a matter of fact, you're not going to let him go. How many know it takes faith to let go? 
Trust to let go. You got, if you're going to have faith in God, you got to trust God by letting go. And when you really trust in God, you have some peace. If you're disturbed, that's a clear sign you're not trusting God with your children. Read. And she put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. Read. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. Now you have to understand when she put him on the Nile River, what was in the Nile River? Crocodiles, alligators. So it took faith for her to let go and to trust God that all was going to be well with this child. And I have to say this, and I'm going to pray for the mothers. There's a lot of mothers tormented over their children because their children doing what they want to do. They're acting great. They're in the streets. They're in the world. But you got to trust God just like my mother trusts God for me. Now, listen, the devil tried to kill me at least five times before I got saved. But I can honestly say that God protected me, I believe, because of my mother's life. You know what the Bible says? The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. What's the seed? The child. When you are in right standards with God, God will cover and protect your child. Now, how, how do I get in right status with God? I line up with God's will. I serve him. I walk in obedience. I seek his face. I put him first. That's how you stay in right status with God. It's a position. Somebody says it's a position. You have to maintain your relationship with God. You can't be up, down, like a yo-yo, in and out, wishy-washy. No, you got to maintain your stance in God. Read. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Read. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. Uh -huh. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. She saw the child. This is Pharaoh's daughter. She was bathing. How many know that God is very strategic? <laughs> God knows what he's doing. God knows the end result. The Bible says all things work together for who? Good. For who? Them that what? Love God. Them that are what? Called according to his what? Purpose. I don't care how dim and dark stuff look now. If you stay in line with God, oh God, if you keep loving God, he'll make sure that thing work together for your good. You know what the devil trying to do? Get you out the will of God. Read. And behold. And behold. When you hear the word behold, that means that's an announcement that something miraculous or supernatural is getting ready to happen. Read. The baby wept. The baby what? Cried. Uh-huh. And she had compassion on the Who child. Who was she? Pharaoh's daughter, a heathen. Read. And she said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Uh-huh. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter. Said who? Whose sister? Look at what God did. The mother let go and the sister got him on the other side. Listen. How many know that God honors and responds to our faith? Read. She said, shall I go and call to, to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? Uh-huh. And that she may nurse the child for thee? Read. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes, go. Uh-huh. And the maid went and called the child's mother. My God. She called his mother. So she let him go over here, but she got him back over there. See, 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 you have to let go of your children at some point, and you have to believe God that he's going to save them, that he's going to deliver them, that he's going to bring them in. And you got to fight the good fight of faith because it don't look like they're thinking about God. But God got her. God, listen, this was a god friend mother, and God had to honor his word. And God sustained and he kept Moses. And God will sustain and keep your children if you maintain your relationship with God. Read. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And she got paid too. <laughs> for taking care of her own child. Y'all don't see this? Mothers, you got a great responsibility. It means something to be living for God and serving God and being in church. Y'all talk back to me. Read. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Uh-huh. And the child grew. He grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. Uh-huh. And he became her son. He became her son. And you know what Moses' name means? Drawn out. 
God had a plan and a purpose for Moses' life. How many know that Moses went on to be a great prophet, a great leader in Israel? So God protected Moses because God had some investment in Moses. And I got news for you. God got some investment in your children. God got a purpose for your child. Let me talk about me. God had a purpose for me. That's why he didn't let the devil kill me. You know, I, I've been through some stuff. I'm talking about before I got saved. The devil was trying to kill me, but he couldn't because God knew I'll be standing here one day. <laughs> Y'all talk back to me. I, and it's amazing. It's amazing. I was getting high like everybody else, but I didn't get addicted. I was sleeping around like everybody else. Didn't catch AIDS. I was drinking like everybody else but didn't become a drunk. Y'all don't hear me this morning. You know what? I believe because of two things, my mother's lifestyle and her prayers. I'm getting high like everybody else. But I didn't end up in no rehab. Y'all talk back to me. Uh, now, now, at the moment, I didn't understand this, but looking back all those years, God's hand was on my life. God sustained me. You know why? Because I had a God. Somebody say God. Fearing mother. Mothers, you don't think it's important for you to live for God, to serve God, to honor God. It makes a major difference. Okay, read. And she called his name Moses. She called his name Moses, which means drawn out. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Because I drew him out of the water. This word influence, it means when you, when you can conf, uh, confine someone to something. When you influence somebody about something. So when you live for God as a mother, it will have a major impact on your children's life. You ain't got to say nothing. Just live for God. Just model Christ before them. And watch what happens to them. They may be acting a fool now. <laughs> it may seem like they ain't stuck God now. We invite you to join the War Crumbs Partnership. Together we can impact the world, accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister in so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry continues to grow, may your life also produce food that shall last. As a No More Crumbs Partner, we will lead around the globe creating change. Because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus. Located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at...